Remember names. This is one I unfortunately have the hardest problem with. Hi, my name is Brooke Butterworth, and this is Mainstay Mindset Podcast. Today, I'm going to give you a straight to the point, no fluff summary of Dale Carnegie's classic book, How to Win Friends and Influence People. If you've ever wondered how to connect with others and make a lasting impression for the betterment of yourself and others and help people out, just create lasting relationships, have a better life, this book is your go-to. First, don't criticize, condemn, or complain. Um, This is something that I think a lot of us grew up with, um, being around people who constantly criticize, condemn, or complain, and it can just be seen as a normal thing. But don't be deceived. This can like completely ruin relationships. And it just, at the end of the day, it really is is a drag on people. So um, criticism puts people on the defensive and it damages relationships. So instead, trying to be understanding and forgiving is really the best approach in how to maintain healthy relationships. Next, give honest and sincere appreciation. A genuine compliment can go a long way in a relationship. So looking for ways to appreciate someone and calling it out rather than keeping it internal and only paying attention to the negatives can really help people feel invited into your life. Uh, Number three, arouse an eager want in others. This is not as sexual as it sounds. Um, Frame your requests in a way that highlights the benefits of the other person appealing to their desires and needs. Uh, Next, six ways to make people like you. Um, This can sound really, again, this this book, um, I've told this to my friends and people who I've recommended this book for, it sounds manipulative, but if you really do if you really do wanna improve yourself and your relationships with others, then maybe it's best to put into practice ways to do that. Um, These are habits, these are, in a way, improving morals. And that's what I like about this book. Um, And morals are just how you treat people and how you conduct yourself, right? Six ways to make people like you. Number one, become genuinely interested in other people. Okay, so we're not gonna be sitting around and asking questions about ourselves, what what they like about us. We're gonna ask them about them. Um, And we're also not gonna sit back and just have them ask us all the time. That's a very one-sided conversation. And you know, if you've ever been the person trying to make conversation with someone and they never ask you anything back, the conversation could get pretty stale pretty quickly. So we're gonna avoid that. We show sincere curiosity about other people's lives, interests, and their histories. Um, Number two, Smiling, it's a universal welcome signal. Um, I think this goes innately into our very beings from nature. A smile is the easiest way to make someone feel at ease, to create a positive first impression. Number three, remember names. This is one I unfortunately have the hardest problem with. I don't know why it's so hard for me to remember, but um, that is a huge way to make people feel very valued and that you care about them as an individual. Imagine you meet a celebrity at a coffee shop or no, better yet, on the red carpet and you just briefly say, hi, my name is so-and-so. And And then five years pass and they see you at a supermarket and they say, hey, you're Dave, right? You would feel like, wow, this guy's the best guy that ever lived or this woman. That just shows a personal touch on a whole other level. Businesses that are white glove service, the Ritz, for example, they are in the business of knowing names. So that is one to keep in mind. A person's name is the sweetest sound to them. Use it often. Number four, be a good listener. Encourage others to talk about themselves. Be attentive and responsive. Five, talk in terms of other people's interests. What interests them? What are they interested in? If I am speaking with someone new, I don't just say, well, I love the piano forte. I'm going to talk about, you know, what are you interested in? And finding common ground is the best way to approach conversations. Be a good listener. Align your conversations with what others want to talk about and what the person cares about. I've heard people talk about relationships they've been in and the other person was asked, what is their favorite color? What is their favorite food? And, um, you know, the girlfriend, you know, stereotypically will answer, oh, his favorite food is this. He always orders this cup of coffee. And then um, 
the best case scenario, the guy will say the same thing. But I saw a video where the guy was like, oh, I, I don't know. Um, so when you actually care about someone, when you love someone, you'll know what they care about. And this is a, just a common way to show someone you care. Number six, making others feel important. You do this sincerely, you show respect, you show kindness and appreciation for contributions and presence of the other person. Next, we're gonna talk about ways to win people over to your thinking. Negotiations happen all the time. If you ever had any sort of want or need from someone or something that you wanna get, usually you have to interact with people in order to get that thing. And that is a negotiation at the end of it all. Now, the best way to do this, um, Dale Carnegie lays out beautifully and masterfully. Masterfully. <laughs> Number one, avoid arguments. So arguments rarely lead to positive outcomes. Striving for understanding is better instead. So if someone doesn't wanna do something or they hurt our feelings, the best way to approach it is to ask them, what was going on uh, when this thing happened? When you understand their side of the story, you're much more easily able to come to a middle ground where you both understand each other and perhaps you can help them out too, which usually leads to them helping you out as well. You're never going to reach the middle ground if you don't even know why they were doing things in the first place. Number two, show respect for other people's opinions. Even if you disagree, respect the right way to hold different views. You can respect someone and not yell at them, right? Avoid saying you're wrong. <laughs> Number three, admit mistakes quickly and emphatically. We've all been in a relationship at one point of an, or another with uh, a spouse or a parent or a friend where they never admit they're wrong. When you're wrong, own it immediately. This creates trust and respect. Number four, begin in a friendly way. Start with kindness to set a positive tone. It builds trust and respect as well. And this sets a positive tone for the interaction. Number five, get the other person to say yes to something. You find common ground and you build agreement from the start. So whatever it is, you always go back. And my boss said this the other day. He, he, I asked him, how do you keep cool in, in arguments? Because we were in a meeting the other day and someone was getting heated, right? But he was so relaxed. And he just brought it back to what we were talking about and what we were trying to accomplish. And he called it what's and how's. All of this is kind of summarized in what's and how's. So you bring it back to what is a common goal that you guys both want. Start the conversation with agreements on what's, what are you guys going to be working on on the same page. Side note from this book, Sometimes you can't fix things and they're going to be too toxic for you to work with. And that's at the, at the end of the day, you have to pick these negotiations and you have to work with the right people. You also have to keep the right people in your life. So if you're going to be stomped on or if you find that they keep hurting your or, or crossing your boundaries, probably not best to be friends with those people. But this is how to win people over if you have to. Um, I, I digress. You find common goals, build agreement from the start. That's a great place to start from. Number six, let others do most of the talking. Great salesmen do this. Great salespeople, they let you figure out what you want. They will ask very pointed questions and have you basically talk yourself into buying the product. This is kind of the same approach and people love talking about themselves. People love to um, talk about what the problem is and you can be that person to help them fix it, for example, if you're, sell, if you're selling something that can help fix it. Um, but people love to talk about themselves. Give them the space to do that, and they will love spending time with you. Number eight, see things from their point of view. We just talked about this because I had an aside with you guys, but empathy is the key to understanding others, and that's the key to understanding and influencing others efficiently and effectively. Number nine, be sympathetic to their ideas. You want to help them feel acknowledged and validate their feelings and perspectives. Number 10, appear to nobler motives. Inspire and motivate others by appealing to higher values and aspirations. You can do this by creating a culture 
where you're helping others see the nobler intention in their everyday actions. If you're a leader of a company, you don't want to say, we make phones. You want to say, as Apple did so brilliantly, we want to think differently. We want to help the world aspire to something better. We want to change the world for the better. By this company being alive, by you working at this company, by you buying this product, we're making the world a better place. So it's getting deeper than just the surface level. 11, dramatize your ideas. Use vivid stories or analogies to make your points more compelling. You can do this by learning, uh, getting a coach, or just thinking of stories that will really help make people laugh, make people feel comfortable, maybe help explain your ideas, explain what your, what your goal is. Either way, stories are, have been around since the beginning of mankind. And uh, if you think about people sitting around a fire at the end of a day, uh, at the end of a hunt, and stories bringing people together, they work very much the same way. Our minds are built narratively That wasn't in the book. I just wanted to say that. Um, 12, throw down a challenge. People love a good challenge. They love to feel accomplished. You can motivate them to take action by giving them a challenge. A lot of people do this in sales campaigns, right? They challenge someone to do something and that creates a lot of momentum. Um, And it's a great thing to do in a business or at the end of a conversation. Be a leader, change people without offending. This is so difficult to do in this day and age. Uh, Everyone has their own opinions. You can't walk out the door though without being offended. By even going outside, even by looking at things publicly available like the internet, you risk being offended. So how do we start doing that as leaders? Number one, number one, we begin with praise and appreciation. We start by acknowledging that someone is doing something well. Number two, we call attention to the mistakes indirectly. What does that mean? We subtly point out errors, making it easier for someone to accept that they have been in the wrong. Number three, talk about your own mistakes first. It often softens the blow and it shows humility. Number four, ask questions instead of giving orders. You wanna guide people with using questions that lead to their own solutions. Again, like a great salesman. Number five, let others save face. Avoid embarrassing or belittling others. Help them maintain dignity. Number six, praise every single improvement that you can. Recognize even the small progress. It encourages continued effort. And this is gonna be really hard for a lot of people who are so critical of themselves because it's like, well, Why should that be deserved? Why should we praise others for something so little and insignificant? Well, it's time to love yourself more. And this is, again, why I really love this book in a lot of ways, because it's just another way to love people, right? Even yourself. Number seven, give a fine reputation to live up to. So you're setting the standard here. Um, And it's kind of like making uh, a higher, nobler moral, but in a term of you're setting high expectations and you're showing that you believe in their potential, them as an individual. Um, Like in Treasure Planet, Jim Hawkins is talking to Silver. No, you listen to me, James Hawkins. You got the makings of greatness in you. But you gotta take the helm and charge your own course. Stick to it, no matter the squalls. And when the time comes, you get the chance to really test the cut of your sails and show what you're made of. Well, I hope I'm there, catching some of the light coming off you that day. And saying that he believes in Jim Hawkins, Jim has a completely different perspective of Silver, even though when they first met, he didn't like him one bit. Anyway, I just watched Treasure Planet the other night. 
help them believe in their potential. Just by having someone believe in what has not already been proven in themselves, people grow. People can reach new heights. They can truly reach new heights because they just had someone encourage them even a little bit. That's a beautiful thing. Number eight, use encouragement. Highlight strengths and possibilities to motivate and um, gift them with that. Just like we just talked about, encouragement can go so far. People, it's crazy how little encouragement people need to improve their lives. It's so sad that people get so little encouragement, but it does wonders and you can do this for other people. Number nine, make others happy about your suggestions. Frame suggestions in a way that shows benefits and value. How will suggestions that you say to improve things benefit them or the company or indirectly or directly affect them? People are self-serving at the end of the day, um, more, more often than not. So if you do show them the value of what changes would make on them or things that do apply to them, that's going to make the biggest difference rather than just making it what you want or need. Next, points worth noting. Number one, criticism is futile. Even in studies of uh, animal training, with dogs, for instance, they found that the negative punishment of dogs was far, far less effective than positive reinforcement. So recognizing the statistics and the scientific research behind this, it's the same for humans. And we have to realize that criticism is futile if we want things to change. Criticism wounds pride. It creates resentment instead of a positive interaction. It fosters an unsupportive environment and people won't wanna be around you if you're criticizing them constantly. Number two, people are emotional beings. We usually logically reason out why emotions are important for us to make a decision. Usually decisions are not logical. It's because we feel a certain way and then we use logic to back up our feelings. This is why we can't trust feelings all the time, side note, but understanding that emotions drive people Behaviors and responses can change your life, can change your business, approach people with empathy, and um, it will make a huge difference in how people feel about you. Side note, people will remember you by the feeling you create when they are around you. Number three, key to influence. Focus on what others want and show them how to achieve it. This is the heart of influence. This book was written before influencers, um, but it's incredibly valuable. And I think a lot of these new psychology, uh, not psychologists, but philosophers um, and even social media is built around what we've always known innately to be important. If you are really good at influencing others, you can get so much out of life. And unfortunately, we see a lot of people who are not good, who in a manner of speaking evil, using this power for evil. Imagine if those of us who have altruistic, altruistic motives and actual genuine care for the goodness of the world, the world to get better. Imagine if we took these insights and actually did something with them rather than just letting people who had evil motives do it for us instead. Number four, the secret of success. Success lies in understanding and respecting others' perspectives. It's about finding balance from their point and yours. Really try to understand their viewpoint. Bridge the gap. It's a literal mountain in another mountain, and you can literally build a bridge between it and hang out with each other. Um... In summary, Dale Carnegie's book, How to Win Friends and Influence People, while on the surface may seem manipulative, it is actually the key to building stronger relationships with people and making good changes in the world. It's, it's timeless wisdom, creating and building positive relationships and influencing people efficiently and effectively for the better. It's very, very positive. By following these principles, 
You can create more meaningful relationships and connections in your life and maybe even build a business that that succeeds just with these points. Because usually if people are led by emotion, it might be one of these things that's destroying relationships and a company and a business. If you can just work on one of these things a day, it could make huge changes in your lives. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Stay mainstay.